I'm cold. Cold. It's still going. Is it the snow? Oh no! It's just uh, it's just cold. The house is cold. I haven't uh, sorted out the heating really. Ah oh, yes. It's a uh, it's an old house and it has coal fires, open fires, which are obviously we don't we don't light. I've turned down the air conditioning while you're saying that. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> It's, it's about 25 degrees in this uh, room here. Yeah, well, it's about 12 in this room here. Ah, uh, that's um, nippy. Yeah, it certainly is. Still, so I've got I've got a fan heater on, so I'll warm up in a minute. So as I say, it's uh, we can the radiators aren't big enough for the rooms, um, and it's single glazing. It's very drafty, so it's not. It's not. How, houses normally double glazed. Houses are normally double glazed. Um, yes, uh, and they're normally not as as drafty as this one, or as cold, or as badly uh, designed in terms of the heating. So it was made in 1926, and they, I don't, know, I don't know what the original heating was, but uh, obviously that's long gone, but it's not been replaced by anything suitable. Anyway. What's happening here? I'm, I'm trying to get this other connection. Yes, well, Elfie has arrived. Good morning, Elfie. How are you? Morning, morning. I'm good. I'm good. You're cold, are you? I, was, I'm very I heard cold. something about heating. Yeah, I'm very cold. <laughs> are you? <laughs> I haven't got that heating sorted out yet. Oh. It was very cold. I was very cold last night as well. You looked a bit miserable. <laughs> I was. I was very tired. And oh, I've got as an echo. Yeah, I just got rid of it. All right. And. Uh, no, I've still got an echo. Is that you, Gary? Um, I'll just check. Can you try that? Uh, okay. That's it. That's yeah, gone. good. Hmm. That's, thank you. Yes, no, I was not... Uh, I was just very tired. Um, that's why I looked a bit miserable. I, I just hmm. can't do evening chats, I think. I mean, 6 o'clock hmm. is not a time for me to be... Well, it's like... Gary, now it's not. I can't be uh, intellectually um, uh, awake. It's, ah. I'm, I'm sort of, and I, and I find the conversation very hard to follow last night. Um, I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't engaged with what people were talking about. I found it. Um, I found it odd, and I thought I would do, because um, I've just got used to talking to you two, and you sort of just it, where things make sense, um, and talking with. <laughs> well, uh, well, also uh, because I saw because we know each other's where we where we where we are because we've talked and we've met, and meeting other people. I think I've said this before. It's just hard knowing where they are and what their what their starting point on this course is. So you, you just don't know quite how to relate what they're saying to what I'm thinking, and what I'm thinking to what I should say next. Which is why we're sort of quiet. I just sit there and think. Um, I'm not sure that anything I say is, is at all. I'm pretty sure it's not much valuable in any case. But it's in in that in that forum. I'm just I just don't know what value it has. Well, you have the value of throwing the curveball in, and that is very refreshing. Otherwise, 
uh, I mean, this would be such a cozy scene of well-meaning people. I mean, with, with, you know, in the bath way. <laughs> well, that, I think that's what I felt. It's just like, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> isn't this nice? And isn't this come on, you nice? <laughs> isn't this good? It wasn't wasn't the Buddha good? And I said, well, what? Well, what's, what? Are, why are we on the course that's called? after Buddhism or beyond Buddhism. It's like, it, it, it's as if we're not on that one at all. We're just on a reinterpreting Buddhism course, mm. reinterpreting it for the modern era. And I don't know, I think I've, as I, I think I said this before, I think I've just moved. It's really that. concise. I, I, I will mull on that. I, that. That rings true. Mm -hmm. My, I've got my coffee anyway, it's going to keep me warm. Say hello to Ainsley. Say hello. Ah, uh, hello. Hi, <laughs> Cheer him up, will you? If you can't. <laughs> she did. <laughs> anyway, you need that. I'm quite cheerful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's maybe chill. Much, much more cheerful now. Warm. Warm uh, when I've got coffee and, and my mates to talk to. Um, what could be better? <laughs> you know, I think what, one of the problems, if you want to call it a problem, is that the, the group that we've got now with the online course of where it starts, it's way bigger. Um, and yeah. and uh, it's online, which means people don't really have to make a huge effort to actually go somewhere and, you know, in, a, in a physical type of environment. Um, and also, you know, it's just a lot cheaper, I guess. So the, the bar to actually come in is, is a lot lower. And, and, pe and people who, you know... Oh, not, the riff not necessarily, Well, no, I'm not necessarily suggesting that, but I am suggesting that the, the, the bar for that is, is a lot lower. Um, that, you know, if you had to sort of pay... what, what How much did we pay for the course last time? I forget. Oh, thousands. You know, thousands of, of pounds dollars, whatever it was. Um, so, you know, a, a pretty, pretty high damn bar. You know, it was. Not many people yeah. can afford yeah. it. It's a big yeah. commitment. Um, yeah. 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 So Time-wise really and money-wise. And the yeah. time. Was, oh, yeah, yeah. The time. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's not a, a, it's a very, very high bar, mm -hmm. uh, which means that people have to be really sure they know what they're getting into for the, to, to begin with. Yeah. And I'd, I'd say that all the people who went on, on our course uh, previously, um, had read Stephen's book, uh, which in, in a lot of cases in, in this course, I would say that there's probably quite a few that either have either not read it at all or have only sort of seen a few videos or, or uh, have not really fully comprehended, um, you know, all, all he's going, you know, all that he's putting forward. And so, you know, I think it's inevitable that you're going to sort of be going over the same old Buddhist ground. Um, and, uh, you know, and so it's just, you know, the nature of the media, it, it's just going to be like that. You know, that yeah, that's a good are, point. Yeah. People aren't going to be quite as sort of, you know, oh, yeah, Stephen Batch, I've seen him before, he's pretty cool, uh, without sort of really going into it and sort of actually you know, trying to understand what a secular take on, on, on the Buddhist Dharma act actually is. Um, so there's a, there's, a, there's a big difference, I think, in, in the, the nature of the courses, just because of yeah. that alone. And I add something yeah. to that, because it's so, that to me, it becomes more apparent in our course, because it's a bigger group, and it has that big contingent of four people who were on the first Dharma course on the first one I kind of I, I thank the Lord that we were on the second one because I think the first one hoovered up all the Stephen Batchelor um, uh, aficionados from they all say you know we first read him 25 years ago like so they have been uh, they they have been to the uh, not just Gaia House, but uh, the other one, the Sharpness one. Or, and they, they have been really following him and come from the Buddhist world and have been following him for yonks. They feel so very comfortable with it. Mm 
And it is just like a new, like, like Rupert just said, I think that's, that is just it. They are reinterpreting Buddhism, which they don't find any fault with, in a slightly mm-hmm. more secular way, meaning of our age. So how can we just bend and find a new language, uh, which leaves everything intact, but it, it feels of now? And, and when they talk, you know, there is no questioning of why the Buddha, why not Socrates, why not the Stoics, mm-hmm. you know, what, and, and there's an adherence to the word of, of the, the, the Pali canon, and mm-hmm. it has to be all addressed through there, and then they are just really nice, well-meaning Buddhists, mm-hmm. really. That sit there, and that's. Uh, would you agree, Rupert? That Absolutely. that comes over. Yeah. That, so that's exactly what I was feeling, and, and I, I think I, again, I said this before. I'm repeating myself, but this, I, I, it's. I, I think it's significant that Stephen offered the option of those people who'd been on his course who only come to the second semester of this course, and I, that's what I initially thought I'd do, and. I was persuaded by you lot to come on this one because I because you said you'll come in. So if you're coming, I'll come. Right. But I, but but I think what he was saying was, I guess is just my imagination. But I I guess what he was saying was, look, I've moved on from where I was the last time I did this, but I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to give that again in the first semester and then in the second semester i'm going to be looking at the future and looking at where we can go so but so i think this is very comfortable for those people you've just been saying healthy the people who've been following stephen for a long time people are perhaps who are on the first secular dharma course the people that have read the books and and weren't on our course because I did I I I got the impression that Stephen when he said at the end he said you know I don't want to use the word Buddhism anymore mm. I, I think we should just move away from having that word because it 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 and that's why it's Dharma you know it's not Buddhism because it it takes it can take it restrains us so much having the word Buddhism. But he's not saying that at the moment, although he is using interesting techniques in that he would that the, using the Greek tragedies as an example, not using Buddhist examples. And, and I, I felt I just didn't think it, it worked. I mean, because but I could see what he was trying to do. I think he's trying to use different language now. Because I think it's going to come as a bit of a a shock to some of those other people when he he does say things. If he's going to say it again, like, "Well, I think we should stop using Buddhism as a word, as a title," mm. but it, it hasn't happened yet, and I think that's just I'm just a bit sort of frustrated and not quite sure, as I say, what what to do. Other than perhaps, like you said. Elfie, I mean, maybe it is. Uh, maybe I should just be agent provocateur and and just say things. Well, actually, I don't. I don't think. Actually, I'd be like Gary, really. You know, so I say, well, you know, I don't. I don't think it's it's. There is. I sort of said last night. You know, I could see a bit of value in Buddhism and the Buddha and and Gautama, but it's it's alongside all these other things. And I was thinking about it last night, and I was thinking, well, without science, there is no sense to this. You have to have science running alongside whatever dharma you think is valuable in our in the modern world, because our modern world is built around science. And you, in the same way that theirs was built around rebirth and karma, and you can't have... You can't have art, can't have the Dharma without science. Or in the Western world, you can't have it without 3,000 years of art.
Anyway, I think it's, I'm going to stop it's partly, partly Stephen's fault, I'm going to call it fault, uh, in that he's, you know, always trying to find equivalences from, from the Pali canon in, into a, a modern lang language or context, but using only using that framework, not moving outside that framework. And that, of course, could be quite deliberate, but it's also an area that he's very comfortable with because he knows his stuff. He's mm -hmm. studied yeah, yeah, for a yeah. very no, long right. time, and he knows his stuff. He can, you know, he's really familiar with it, you know, about, you know, and so you're once again we're sort of spending a lot of time you know, finding, you know, trying to find equivalences in, in vocabulary, uh, you know, from, from you know from two and a half thousand years ago in, in, a, in a language that isn't used anymore, that has been sort of you know, uh, you know corrupted in so many ways and just obscure in a lot of other ways, uh, and and just but but, but just using just not stepping outside that framework, but, you know, that, that may well change. I mean, this is, a, you know, he is, of course, I guess, trying to address, you know, Buddhists, you know, people who have come to this through Buddhist um, uh, traditions, through the you know, people who have had interest in Buddhism and, and, and so come to, uh, you know, uh, Stephen's, and other people's uh, take on, on um, early Buddhism. And, and so it is, I guess, I'm guessing, you know, just appealing to that electorate, you know, that, that sect, sect of people, because for a start, that's the one he's most familiar with, because that's been his world for his entire life almost. Um, um, and, and so, you know, I, I don't, I would expect, I would hope that, you know, we would certainly move on uh, in, come the, uh, the, the second uh, um, semester. Yeah, and no, I, think, I think you're right. Then we, will, we, we can move him on. I think you're absolutely get, right. I think we were in, in, in our course, we were, we were maybe quite influential in that way because the, the the disparateness of our of the group that on the second arm. If you if you compare it to what we met as members of the first lot, and now in this group, it, it's a very particular. Like Gary says, we had invested a lot, and we had all studied his stuff, um, and yet there was such a wide range and not committed Buddhists. I mean, the, there was only one really committed Buddhist who, who tr was troubled by all the questioning in the group. Mm -hmm. The rest of it was very up for questioning all of this and what the value of it was. I think it might have been really quite in that way challenging for Stephen, working with a group like that, but also freeing because we encouraged him to to leave it you know you don't need to say 38 what's it to us you know that doesn't impress us and uh, we do without how about that and i i think it, it might have been quite inspiring for him you know he looks at other people now maybe more but so in in a way having thought he he moved on or was already there, I had also an expectation that he would start from there, but he doesn't. In this one, he goes back to what is his safety zone or where he thinks he has to pick all these Buddhists up so that they will follow him in his argument. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're still struggling because, I mean, don't put this on the web. My God, I'm so, such a cow <laughs> today. I don't want to, okay. for people yeah. to see that. But no, I do think that they are they are struggling to leave the Buddhism behind. What's wrong with it is say the four truths have served me well. They're good, you know. I had they're good. the exact same uh, argument last night with my group. Although you know they're a good group, I should add. Yeah, uh, but, yeah. But they are, you know, they are stuck uh, ah. with the four truths, uh, the four noble truths, and, and, and they're, finding it, they're finding it really difficult um, ah. to. To move, to move on for that or to, or to reconcile it or, or they can reconcile the task they can see the task as long as they can't see that they can 
uh, but you know they've, they've held on for so long. Uh, in, in, in a, you know, we're talking about decades-long you know, adherence to a Buddhist orthodoxy about the, the Four Noble Truths. I guess it's just hard to sort of all of a sudden just drop all that and sort of move on to a, a task-based model. Um, it, I think you're right. It just strikes me as odd as to why they're on this course, because you, it's, it is, what's it called? Beyond Buddhism or after Buddhism or whatever it's called? I mean, or secular, no, is it just called secular beyond, Buddhism? Beyond after Buddhism. Buddhism and beyond, it's called. Buddhism after, and beyond. So, after, after Buddhism and beyond. beyond. So, so he, <laughs> he says... Uh, we even after Buddhism isn't good enough. We need to go beyond yeah. now. So if it's but after Buddhism, he wants to sweep them all up and try again to convince them that this is a worthwhile path. And they are not convinced at the moment. They're still basically desperately trying to fit it into what's comfortable there. Yeah. Yeah. Although it was interesting last week in one of those breakout groups. Um, somebody, somebody was saying I was having, oh, I can't quite understand the task business and the, the, the difference between the truth and the tasks and, and what does the task, what does it mean? And I said, well, I've got, I've got a very clever friend and she says that rather than tasks, you should perhaps, we should think of them as skills. And I actually said, you should, if you're in a group with Elfie, then she can tell you all about this, but I was saying that skills, they are skills that you can learn rather than tasks that you can achieve or truths you who accept. And that went down really well. There were lots in that group who were saying, oh, that's really helpful to see it in that way as something that you can learn to do. And so they, were, they, they weren't the same people, obviously, that were in our discussion group and I've no idea what their background is but I it, it might well be that there are people on the course mm. maybe maybe because it is cheaper and that you can have a broader you can get more in who are all who are the who are, who are not the adherents to the old Stevens way of thinking but are people who are very receptive um, because they don't have uh, a lot invested in traditional Buddhism, and and they and and they're they're thinking that some of the things that you know the, the, that we've been discussing could be useful and could be a way forward. So I I found that really interesting that they were um, just elucidating for them something that's come up from our discussions that they found that useful i thought oh this is interesting because that that was that's something i found i found very useful thinking of them as skills and they make so much more sense then so and and it was interesting to see just saying that to somebody else who, who i've not had a discussion with i don't know at all but just in that context and she immediately came oh yeah that's really useful so I think that was really encouraging to, to think. Well, there were, I could you could make a connection from something that we'd been talking about, and we might find them, you know, in those discussion groups where we all jumbled up, actually. Yeah. And we might find uh, more like-minded people in that yeah. way, you know. Then, then when we've just been thrown together, I think on purpose with uh, people from the first SD mm. course. And um, and and uh, finding out that actually there might be, you know, that was a different quality course. Actually, I know not quality, just a different orientation course. I, I, it might have been. Looks to me like, you know, big contingent of the, the other thing, followers. The mm. other thing that's interesting is, is as well as the SD course, the, the one we were on. The parallel course is the committed practitioner course and the very name of that suggests to me and i think one of the people that are on ours has been on our discussion group has been on that but committed practitioner you're committed to what 
you're committed to presumably Buddhism because you can't really be committed to secular Buddhism because it doesn't exist yet. Which means that there, you know, you're committed, and I think that the very fact that that course is running alongside a course which is suggesting, or well, suggesting that there's something that that is not necessarily relevant, and we should be looking for something new, suggests a, a difficulty sort of is sort of inherent in in Bodhi College, and I think you've mentioned this before, Gary, that that, that there's a sort of sense of Bodhi College being um, a setup. And you've, you've said it as well, Elfie, with some of the other people who are part of Bodhi College, that that's a, there's an ethos, whether it's written or, um, what is it, whether it's, you know, it's just, just sort of understood, that is committed to Buddhism within Bodhi College. And yet what we're, what we're, what we're, looking us three and others are something different from that and if you were starting from here you wouldn't call it Bodhi College <laughs> yeah well that, that is a problem uh, this uh, you know, uh, what is that committed practitioners or what was the term committed uh, practitioners is the other course the other um, yeah, well, two year course I think, I think you could certainly say a, a, a committed practitioner of Dharma I mean, I think there's, uh, you know, I'm quite comfortable with that myself. I mean, you know, it's not, uh, but, but yeah, I, I, we really need to know a committed practitioner of what exactly? Um, because a committed practitioner of Buddhism doesn't make sense. It's, uh, yeah, for me, it's, uh, you don't practice Buddhism, you, you believe in it. Uh, you practice Dharma. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm presuming here that, that, you know, that that, that is um, you know, what I'm thinking about. But yeah, it is. Body college is, of itself is, limit, is going to limit itself just because it is, you know, set up to study early, uh, early Buddhism. Yeah, and, it says uh, so. <laughs> that, that is the framework. Yeah, that's a, that quite explicitly is, is, the, yeah. is the scope of what they're looking at. Yeah. So to sort of take it further, to sort of just say, Okay, we've, we've, we've sort of studied early early Buddhism. We've extracted a lot of worth from it, but now we need to move outside of that and and uh, start looking at um, you know, other areas. That, 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 well, that would mean that the body college would, I guess, become less appropriate um, in in terms of you know development of of of, of um, or or expression of of, of Dharma of a secular Dharma. Uh, that, 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 that was not just limited to, to um, early Buddhism or, or, or the, the Dharma of, of uh, Gautama. So I can see some, you know, problems going down the line um, you know, for Body College in, you know, in wanting to continue with this uh, development um, in that they've limited themselves in some way. They've sort of caged themselves into that... Uh, um, in the early Buddhism model, um, uh, with that, and perhaps you know that uh, perhaps it sh should have been Dharma from the start, but that probably wouldn't have been possible with the, with the teachers they had, because they, you know that they've all come from from Buddhist traditions and they have attachments to that tradition, but you know because um, that, that's who, who all their friends are. That, that, that their whole lives have been you know, centered around this idea of Buddhism. And, and belief in Buddhism, you know, even though they may have moved on from that. Despite that, their, their community, their connections, their whole life has been you know, plugged in to Buddhism. And so I can sort of see, you know, going further, I think, you know, it's, it's going to be very limited to sort of use um, body college as, as a base for developing a, an expression of, of, of genuinely secular dharma. Yeah, the only buddy that he got in uh, the Bodhi College is John Peacock, who, when I attended this London seminar, 
a year, a good year ago, uh, it was um, clear that John Peacock sees, you know, the teachings of the Buddha, the Stoics, the Epicureans, um, uh, the, the, the um, Heidegger, he studied them all, I think, to similar intensity and draws on them all in this just, okay, these are the f ways that people have looked at the world in their different eras and come up with their suggestions of how to have a good life. So there, he's the, he's the only truly secular person in Bodhi College because mm -hmm. at, on the same weekend was also that open day. And uh, I think, and uh, the open day I, I deliberately sat in with the people presenting themselves or the, all the, the teachers that I had no idea of, Anukulao or whatever. And they are very committed Buddhists. And mm -hmm. they throw the Pali stuff around. And there's no inclination to let that go because there's a lot of pride attached in it and a lot of learning, mm -hmm. you know, well-placed pride. This is their life's study mm -hmm. and work and they will do heck and give that up because mm -hmm. that's where they shine <laughs> you know just mm -hmm. like they know more than than the rest of us and why should they give that one up so but Stephen if he moves too far they will try to rein him in if I if you ask me just because Bodhi College is about the study of early Buddhism, as, as you quite rightly say, Gary. Not mm -hmm. about secular stuff and uh, overarching philosophy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because I, I may have got this wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Stephen, when he first came back, he helped set up Sharpham House. Uh, and Sharpham was I've been there it's, it's a lovely place and it was the first sort of western buddhism center uh, so this was a long time ago 30 years or so ago and he then left that because of their association with um mindfulness and courses which could be certificated I can't remember where I read this, but it because they started to get aligned with universities and you could get qualifications. And he he felt, I think he and Martin felt that that wasn't what they were interested in or thought it was appropriate for um, uh, the sort of Buddhist approach. And then it, that's when the, he went and helped set up Gaia which doesn't have those associations, doesn't have that sort of association with courses and things. So it it strikes me that he might well just move on, perhaps, from Bodhi College with, with John Peacock and just say, well, actually, yeah, that's fine, but it's actually not where I am now. So there might be, because he's sort of, all I'm saying, he's got previous, he's got his sort of, and I mean, after all, I mean, he's been a monk in two different places as well. So it might well be that he just says, "Well, actually, yeah." <laughs> it is a good point. You know, I've, I've he moves I've, I've, on. I've, he yeah. moves on. So he moves on. Can, um, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I'm not saying I can predict the future. I'm just saying that, no, no, that there's only potential. because only because he's, he's basically says he wants to pull back in it in a couple of years. He's getting tired. Uh, yeah, he's getting yeah. old. He doesn't want to do this anymore. Uh, when, you know, he's, he's, well, he's not that old, is he? He just wants to, he just wants to sort of, you know, bring down the, 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 the pace a little bit. And so does he have the energy to sort of go through all the prob problems and hassle and of setting up a, you know, a yet another institution, another building, another... It's maybe too much well, for him. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But, I mean, like, think... Joe Biden is the president <laughs> of the United States, and he's more than he's 12 years older than uh, Stephen. So I don't know. Yeah. I think maybe Stephen has a, he'll have a, I think, I don't know. It depends, doesn't it? You can get enthusiastic about something. You can be revived in something if you feel mm. there's value 
and com- and and you can. So we'll just see. I don't know, but you you might well, be right. If, if this know. is what he uh, teaches in order to get the punters in and to fish people out of out of the Buddhist pool, uh, he, you might say, "I don't want to do that forever." Why should I go over that oh, old yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. Yeah. that mm-hmm. I have taught for decades now and still get the same old questions? Other people can do mm-hmm. that because he's the trailblazer. He's not the one mm-hmm. who you know does the same college course for, for 20 years. That wouldn't be a good use of his potential, or did. So he wants to write and have new ideas. He wants to bring Socrates in now. That really fires him up, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But then... Uh, when he needs to make the money, like anyone does, at, at the moment, I think he's making enough money to let him off teaching the same old uh, so that he can uh, push forward. That I would would be my, he's not tired of studying or bringing new ideas in. But l- look at what he's teaching at the moment. Does that give him huge satisfaction? I doubt it. So it, he has. Noticed, uh, he also noticed that um, in all of these courses, he had the choice of not using the word Buddhism in the title. He didn't have to use the word Buddhism. I mean, uh, but he is. I mean, it's a, it's a marketing thing. Even like mm. the, I think the title <laughs> of his book, it was. It yeah. wasn't sort of you know. This is this is about Dharma. No, this is after Buddhism. You have to have Buddhism in that title. We're not going to sell them. Yeah, and yeah. that's probably true. If yeah, had, if you had a if you ran a course that did not have anything related or in a title that said Buddhism, the chances are you'd only get half the students. That, that's my guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's very much a marketing thing. Uh, you know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying you shouldn't you know, attend to those sort of things. I mean, it's, you know. He's obviously got to get the numbers in, uh, but you know that is a, a limitation. I think if, if there was a, a course being held, uh, you know, sometime in the future, and he called it something that had no reference to Buddha or Buddhism in the title at all, um, uh, you know, I'd, I'd probably suggest that you know that the uptake would not be quite as um, as much or as many. It would be interesting to know what the sales of solitude are compared to after Buddhism, which is no comparison. No comparison, I would say. Mm. So it's not it's not his name that's selling at the moment. It's that it's that it's Stephen Batchelor and after Buddhism. It's not just Stephen Batchelor that sells. I think so. Not too too few people. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. interesting so actually we might be you know us turning up and maybe even i mean it it made a strong plea to contribute you know he would uh it he would well, we see where it goes. It would be very interesting yeah. if this it, is just yeah. if he's just building, satisfying the base, and then has a strong urge to go elsewhere, or if this will just peter out in that way. I, I mean, that would be an have, interesting thing to find out where he is with it. Have either of you written on the forum? No, no, I'm really such a no, nor me. Uh, and that, that's interesting. Isn't it? Why wouldn't it? Because we're the sort of people who would. Who well, me and Gary are anyway. And we, you know, but you can write, right? Well, you mm-hmm. both can write, amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just my, my, my the mind boggles often when I follow you and say, Oh, that's delicious because I can't write like that. For start, this mm-hmm. about you saying such a, I would encourage you to even maybe open your own stream on that thing because. Uh, I would follow you and maybe you would gather, you know, the people who might be interested in that, that you might find in your breakout group sometimes, might feel an I attraction feel to an it. Attraction. I, I, I don't you go, but I haven't because I, why haven't I? I was confused. I would think 
have just been confused and I didn't know where to start because I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't have a ground. It was all too, um, I don't know quite where I am with this, with the course. So I didn't know what was appropriate to say. I think mm. that's probably why I yeah. haven't done that. And maybe it's not it's not the time yet because I I I had also no contribution to to make even if I could write in that way, um, to because it's it's so orthodox still that it it's pu putting me off, and the things that are discussed so far are very orthodox in there like the meaning of the self uh, like like what Sean said last night in that and, and writing an essay for a philosophy course about self and non-self and uh, oh <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> haven't we got over that yeah <laughs> Is it really that important? Yeah. Um, maybe it is, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think one of my problems is you know, text. I mean, if you look at the you know, Creative Dharma website, the form that they've got going, I mean, I don't know. I just uh, look at it and I just, it's probably not helped that, that, that uh, I don't have any decent glasses. But I, I'm just sort of completely put off by huge slabs of text um, telling me things that, you know, just no, it is. really. <clears throat> Sorry, which, which the, website is this? this? The, the Creative Dharma. Uh, oh, is sorry, this the Margolis? Creative Marcos? Buddhism. Sorry, Creative, creative Buddhism. Buddhism. Or creative Dharma, I forget. Creative Dharma. Is, is that the Ramsey Margolis? Yes, yes. Right. Yes. Is there a website then? I didn't realize that. I thought it was just a newsletter. But yeah, once again, it's just big slabs of text. And uh, I just look at it and I think, I could, I'll just watch the video. You know? <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I just don't have the energy for, for that amount of text and that <laughs> length of text, which sort of, is just sort of, um, just seems obscure and, uh, and I guess over intellectual. You know, not that I've got anything against intellectual, so I don't. I, it, it, it just doesn't sort of um, appeal to, to me. Which is not to say you know, I, I, I won't write anything at some point, but uh, I think it's got to have some sort of meaning, not just text for the sake of text. Um, and, and I mean, the Dharma isn't about text. It's a, it is about practice. It's about you know that how how we are in the world. I mean, certainly we, we can read about that, and that's all very well. But to sort of have a, an ongoing textual discourse like that, I, I just don't think is, well, for me at least, it just doesn't seem uh, you know, it just doesn't seem right for me. Which is, my, which, which is actually my, my sort of objection right from the very start when, when um, um, Stephen asked me to, to set up that secular dharma um, forum. I just, right from the very start, I thought, you know, this isn't going to work. I, I've, I've run, um, you know, forums for, God, 30 years or more. Uh, I mean, lots of them, all, an awful lot of them. And I'm still running, uh, you know. So I, I know what it takes to sort of, you know, get forums going. And, and uh, I just couldn't see what he was trying to ask me to do would, would, would ever work. And, and I, even with it, with the forums that are, that are attached to the course, uh, it just just leaves me cold. I just can't. Uh, can't, uh, can't just can't really connect with it. 
I thought that was interesting that, you know, that the, uh, what is it, that, that the flow of the, where, where creativity came in from the first session that had the most contributions, really, like everyone, no, not everyone, quite a lot of people contributed and went into a discussion. I haven't read it all because I lost the will to live halfway down. <laughs> But I thought that was so interesting how people obviously feel that that is very motivating creativity and um, and and Buddhism or Dharma and uh, yeah people waded right in there and found that there. but none of what I've started to read there sounded like like Rupert in a way you know where I think ah. Oh, that is not just what you've written, but but what you said throughout the Dharma course, Rupert. That mm. that was always really interesting, and and I I had a real a uh, uh, aha moment when I say, gosh, I thought that would you know people are obviously motiv motivated by that, um, but going off in a completely um, direction, different direction with it. Found that quite interesting for a little bit, and then turned off because it it did not feed me in the same way did you read that rupert i i started like you and i just thought i can't connect with this i don't know i don't know what it's words you know it's like what well, what does for me i mean i've I mean, I, my life has been spent thinking and doing things about around creativity i you know i've been teaching people to be creative <laughs> it's like it's been my job been my life so for me creativity is 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 part of what i am and mm. and the word means something to me and i think that we're, it's not necessarily the case that it means the same thing to other people it's like when gary really? talks about, <laughs> when gary talks about dharma i'm i'm all i'm 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 at a loss because the word is not embodied in me. It's it's I I think I know what it is, but I'm not sure. Which is why when you said Gary at the on the last day, let's have a definition. What's the definition of dharma? I said, oh great, because I really like that because I don't know what it is. Um, I I sort of have a of a feeling for what it is, but it's not been. It's not embodied in me. It's not part of what I am. It's something I'm I'm learning. It's something I'm coming towards. And so when I think with when people use the word creativity, um, they'd have a different sense of what it means than what I think it means for me. Mm. So neither neither is right, neither is wrong. It's just different. So that when I'm seeing it, while other people using the word, I'm not being able to it doesn't resonate because their understanding of the word is different from my understanding of the word. And, uh, and that's just, that's, that's sort of, that's what words, that's the problem with words. It's the problem with language. It's, uh, it's, um, uh, and you know, why we've spent a lot of time talking about definitions and I think is, is very pertinent is because you have to know that you're talking about the same thing. Otherwise, they're just words. It's just Alice in Wonderland, isn't it? That's uh, words or whatever I want them to mean. In in your opinion, I mean, uh, in in the talk that I gave at the course, I, I mean, I found it, I just found it hard to really feel that that if, if people were. You know, offended or, or impacted or just sort of shrugged their shoulders and yeah uh, I mean certainly I mean I, th I think s some people might have been put off perhaps by my delivery more than anything else but but I don't know do, do you have any it was there any sort of I don't know a negative sort of feeling from from anything I said? Well, I can only talk from personally. I thought it was, it, it was the, for me, it was the emperor's new clothes. It was you were asking the question that 
that had been sort of the elephant in the room. I'm mixing metaphors here nicely, I think, <laughs> <laughs> for, for a long time. Uh, but you know, it was, you yeah, know, well, what is this? What are we talking about? We've been talking about this for two years, but, but nobody's actually defined it. Nobody said what it is. And there's just been an assumption that we all knew what we were talking about. And, and I, I, was, I was relieved. And I you know, thought, well, maybe we should have been at the beginning. But in a way, it, was, it seemed just right. Because it, for me, it actually was a beginning. I mean, it's, it's been the good beginning of our discussions. And it was a release because it meant that we, this can be grounded in reality. This is not something which is mystical. This is not something which is metaphysical. This is something which is which is life, which is real life. And, and we have to have a language in which we can discuss it as real life. Otherwise, we are in, in the hands of the academics, the Buddhist academics, because we have to accept their use of language as being the truth. And when they say words that I don't understand, we have to assume, we have to trust them. And I'm and I'm I'm not prepared to trust them yet because they haven't earned my trust. So I can't I can't trust those words, those mm. Pali words, those Sanskrit words. I don't know what they mean. And just because you think they know what you know what they mean doesn't mean that that I should trust you. But when if we can deconstruct it, and we can say right. Well, what is it? What are we talking about? and be open and completely transparent about it, then I feel complete relief because it then allows a, a definition. It allows us to start from the same place. Yes, well, even if they're fuzzy definitions, that's better than no definition at all. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're never going to have complete agreement, but, yeah. but, but at least we know where we're starting from. Yes. And, and that's why the metaphors are good because yes. the stories are good because we all understand the story and we can interpret the story. So that gives us a starting point and they're good. And I, perhaps that's why Stephen was saying, can you think of stories can you, of, of narratives that you've, that, that, and I, I, I felt that he was going off at a wrong tangent myself, but, but I can see perhaps that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to ground it in something else besides Pali texts. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned uh, aphorisms. I think you, you talked about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, which uh, you know, I, I found quite interesting. Um, hmm. you know, yeah. I was thinking sort of along the same lines. But I didn't actually have that word, that aphorism, that sort of. Yeah. Okay. That that made it a lot clearer. Of, yeah. you know, that that is one approach to definition by, by not just defining yeah. words yeah. but by using aphorisms. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's that's what what stays in my mind. This as a it's a it, that's a good um, style analysis of what you did there. Aphorisms mm. and and in trend, and I I think yeah it's a, well that's a good outcome, isn't it? If you at the end so that came at the end of the course. If you think ah that would be the beginning of the next one you know yeah. that would be uh, it's not that's that's as good as it gets yeah surely. absolutely you it know? was yeah uh, when you, when you feel that's that's both a good end and also a good start but and it was all so in that way I, I i don't think anyone did react negatively but it, it's not everyone's cup of tea either i think mm. because yeah. it is intellectual and mm. and and for a lot of people, they come to the end of their willingness to question, especially mm. at the end of a course. They want their questions answered. Thank you very much. They don't <laughs> want the outcome of a course to have a full set of new questions. You know, that, well, why did I do this for, they say. Most people are after the answer. I thought the big learning of the, of the course for me was to be more comfortable with questions mm. and not always just mm. because my <laughs> training as a medic is to always have the answer, not to hold mm. the question. I mean, you got whacked around the head if you had just, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> mm. you were supposed to have the answer. And, and uh, 
So it's it's a lifelong bad habit, and um, mm. so to come for me is glorious to end up with a great set of questions. But that's where you might lose some people, not negatively, but they they I think they just turn off. Mm. You know, they say, okay, well, I, I'm not ready to go into that. I got my lot, my loot. I got my loot. I go home now and mm -hmm. live ever happily. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how delicious, you know? I, I think one of the interesting things was that the only person other than myself, I can say, responded very positively to that. I mean, Elfie Elf, Elf did because she just said so, but well, the the other person who who really responded very positively was Stephen, and it, because he he went away that night and wrote a response. I mean, he was so taken. He didn't do that to anybody else's presentation. He was mm -hmm. so taken by what by your presentation, Gary, that that it was a sort of yeah, that is a great question. Let's have a look at it. Let's let's see what that is. And he came up with his definition and he said well that's what i think it is at the moment but but it might change so that was really interesting because it was as you said elfie that's not what you would expect the professor on your course to do at the end of your course on the last day of your course say ah yeah great question let's let's start from here <laughs> no, that just that doesn't happen so <laughs> But, didactically <laughs> you know so yeah i mean and it, and it was exactly what the what elfie's just said that that's what we were being asked to do was question all the time so yes it was exactly where we should have ended up hmm. at, at the beginning we, this is the start of something. Well, hopefully not, semester two will we'll, uh, yeah. take us on that journey. Yeah. And if it doesn't, we'll, we'll take it there anyway. But, uh, well, I think but that's what, yes, I, I agree. And I think that's what you've been saying, Alfie, is that yeah, maybe we should think about, rather than me or us waiting for Stephen to move on and us to follow on with him, maybe there is a, a sense of doing things, doing Dharma. It's a bit like, it's a bit like last night in our conversation, one of the things was, what do you say if you're in a room when somebody makes a racist comment? And you could either do nothing, or you could get very cross and angry, or you could respond appropriately, um, and you could respond authentically and honestly. So maybe that's where we are. We maybe I shouldn't be saying I'm not going to say anything. I'll think about maybe I just don't know quite yet what what's appropriate and what's what's because of that just not knowing enough about the group but Stephen doesn't mind he just he'll say that this is what I'm saying yeah okay that's interesting well that's I'm, I'm, makes me think well, well I, I'm going to to be exercising my autonomy but, but I'm not, not going to be I probably won't be too strident about it until the, the second semester so you know, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna give people time to, I guess, you know, catch up. If I want to put it like that, um, you know, to sort of to a, you know, you get some some common vocabularies as much as it's possible because that's been a problem. It's a constant problem. Is this vocabulary? We're, we're, we're often using the same words but talking completely different things. Uh, it happens constantly. And uh, that, that's really not, that's really poor communication. But you know, obviously, as, as people sort of start getting a, a better idea of the vocabulary that's been used and how it's been used, you know, it's, it's easier to start 
discoursing when when people do have at least you know the same or, or you know similar fuzzy definitions of, of the words and concepts that they're, they're talking about. Um, but you know, I mean, I'm I'm you know just biding my time, not being reactive, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, using it as sort of a well, yeah. What is it that, that Catholics do? You know, horsehair shirts and uh, things like that. This is like that, like like that. You know, it's, yeah. it's a horsehair shirt which I'm going to wear until the second semester. So. <laughs> And then I think, you know, it, I think it's really up to, up to, to people, you know, to, to, to start taking, taking a lead and, and start, you know, being a bit assertive about their autonomy, about, about their, their thoughts and about their language and about their, how they, they frame things and, uh, and, you know, start more, more aggressively looking outside the frameworks that have been provided by, by early um, Buddhism. So yeah, I'm, I'm just fighting my time. You know, you know, there's, there's a time and place, and uh, I'm, I'm just waiting for that time and place. You know, so, and I think the second semester might be the. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and uh, there might be. Um, a theme coming up where where you both feel inspired and maybe start that thread. I think it'd be quite interesting to have a new thread that that would be uh, findable for like-minded people, mm -hmm. you know, to, rather than burying it as a response to something else. Um, because I can't deal with that much text even, you know, when it goes on and on and on and um, it is, yeah, anyway, it, it often deteriorates into this kind of quite banal how to live, eat well, uh, you know, exercise every day, that kind of how to live a good life in a very banal way. I, 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 in, when those threads go on and on, you know, and creativity gets mashed up in that and uh, being devout gets mashed up in that and being ethically sound gets mashed up in that. In, uh, in, it gets very banal, but maybe that is just the nature of things. Well, it, it gets, uh, could you say that it, it gets prescriptive? I mean, that that's something I've thought about a bit, you know, that, that a lot of things that people will write about are, are more, you know, pres prescriptive, you know, that they're saying, you must do this, you must do that, you must do that, or I must do this, you, I must do that, uh, uh, which I, I, for me, I guess, loses the sense of, uh, of being present and being, uh, and responding to, to the present. Um, so um, I thought it was like really interesting actually what interests you most in the last talk was that he pointed out that it this can be easily and and mindfulness has definitely done that just used the therapeutic quality of mm. of the teaching so just like the full truth kind of can be um, can be seen as a prescription, as a therapeutic thing in the way of follow these rules and then life will be good and meaningful and, and you will escape suffering. And mindfulness definitely has the same bend towards a, a purely, purely therapeutic approach. Follow these um, tasks and... Uh, your life will be beautiful and meaningful and you avoid suffering. Um, and then he, he pointed to that beyondness, that there, must, there should be something that is beyond just 
uh, avoiding suffering. You know, it is something ideally something bigger, such much much more ephemeral, something about uh, uh, not being banal in that way. Um, and where and that's where creativity lies. Whereas in the maybe that's what put me off in the in the contributions and the, on the notice board, it was more like creativity again seen as some kind of therapy, you know, something mm -hmm. that gives you good guidance towards a better life and, and for others and yourself, and then you can express yourself and immediately it kind of just goes small in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, you, did you hear that too? This kind of that he said, don't, you know, what I'm talking about is not therapeutic. It goes beyond that in some way. Not that he was very clear of what that was. I mm -hmm. you, you've been a lot clearer than he was. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think. Maybe that's you're absolutely right. I think it's that's exactly how I see it, and I, it's it's understandable now that the way you've you've said it. But I, I, it didn't come across. Maybe it did come across to people who were used to seeing Buddhism as a, as a therapy. I but. Mm. But it's a, it's a very good point. I mean, the 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 point about it is a, the new what what could be an approach. What I th think should be the approach is that it is a questioning approach. And you, when you ask a question, you don't know the answer, and there aren't answers. And that's the that is sort of an embodiment of what creativity is if, if you knew the answer to something or if there is an answer to something there can't be any creativity or well, there may be a little bit in trying to find the answer but like a crossword puzzle but it's it's not a it's not the essence of creativity the essence of creativity is not knowing Ha. Yeah, that's where the two things come together, don't they? Yeah, I, that would make sense to me. That's that does make sense. To I mean, me. just in, in a, just for an example, if if I'm you teach a student, an undergraduate student, in the first year of a course, and they they're desperate to know how to be successful, they're desperate to know how to design something successfully, and and you have to explain that you. You can't because the if you do that, you're only ever <coughs> excuse me, you're only ever going to produce something that has already been done. So there can't be any creativity because all you're gonna do is design something that somebody else has already designed. The only way to, to be creative, the only way to really design something is to accept that you are, nobody knows what the answer is. And to hold that well, there might it's be quite in, scary. In way, it's, a... it's absolutely it's a it's an openness of vulnerability, isn't it? It's it's uh, um, yeah, it is it is a courageous step. Hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And and a very difficult thing to do. I mean, to 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 go into anything not knowing that there is a solution, even that there is an outcome, that there is a. Is is a sort of like whoa, whoa this is like uh, it's you're not you're on shifting sands you're you you just don't know and you and you just, but being there living in it is lovely it's actually it's 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 a, a huge release you just oh doesn't really matter this you know and and that and that being there being in that state is when as a designer you are the most creative. It's when you're trying to hold on to things, hold on to solutions, that you're restricting yourself from being creative. So it's only when you are you are accepting of the the uncertainty that you can 
the things will happen. You just have to trust that they will. And if they don't, well, they don't. That's fine. It's not the sort of thing I would suggest that doctors do, though, really. So. <laughs> oh, gosh, uh, you will be surprised. <laughs> and, uh, well, and, well might, this might work, that might work, you know. You know. And that's not the worst <laughs> approach, I tell you. The, yeah. the most harm comes from, I know exactly what this is, I got you down, and this is what we're going to do. Right. That, is, that is fraught with difficulties. And that's where a lot of, of actually, um, yeah, not I don't, people, people starters won't feel heard because we don't like to be categorized. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, on the way, there can be good therapeutic uh, hints, can't there? Yeah, on the study of it, as long as we do not lose out of sight that that's not the desired end point to just find a nice cushy therapy that does away with my pain you know that's not the desired outcome that's that is sometimes a strategy uh, get me out of a hot spot at the same time uh, it's about this thing you know still again turning up sticking your neck out being able to be creatively engaged and courageous um not knowing that is the that's the skill to to be living with yeah yeah that was my takeaway from last time that and to i had forgotten see i had i had forgotten that this wasn't just therapy and i said oh i better hold on to that because that is obviously a strong inclination for me you know that because mm -hmm. because i do use it every day to help people out because mm -hmm. they need that in that moment um and and then then they're not in, in a mood for courageously stepping out yet mm -hmm. so it is very much within my repertoire and, and therefore, it's a danger for me and for the people I work with, because that is can't be, you know, then we all cozy around the hearth and that can't be it. We got to be in a Gary space and in a Rupert space where we draw and we don't even look what comes out and we train not to be ashamed you know and and to for gary to just completely abandon ask the difficult questions and um and say well isn't that great that's my outcome of the course i got some fabulous mm -hmm. questions <laughs> do you want to <laughs> hear them and then <laughs> some even are interested <laughs> i i love it <laughs> Mm. that's sure you're mm. living it guys you know and that's the delight mm. <laughs> cool well i'm, I'm gonna get going mm. yeah um, yeah well that's been so interesting and yeah, it's yeah. uh it's been quite a relief for me to listen and think so thank you as always Okay, well, we'll see you again when? Uh, on, on Saturday, maybe. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I noticed Wolf was there this week. I didn't notice him last week. Yeah. Oh. I go through when I get bored and see if, how many people who, whose names I know. Okay. Right. See you Saturday and see you next week. On see you. Yeah. See okay, you. Then. And yeah, yeah, Saturday and next week. Cool. Saturday. Thank you. Right. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah.